bad thing to ask us to up here and do scripture today. Steve might not get up here. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I'll begin. I'm going to read from Mark uh, chapter 11. <clears throat> you know, this week and uh, last week, I've been been trying to, to commit myself back to God and uh, show Him that <laughs> show Him that that it's serious this time. That it's that it's not just you know I felt it for a little while and that uh, you know it, it passed with the wind. It, I can honestly say that in the last week and a half, I've, I've probably read this word more than I did um, back when I was preaching, and and that and that's probably sad. But this this part right here is something that's <clears throat> it's um, it needs to be a focal point for us. But but also prayer. I've prayed more in the last week and a half than, than I've probably prayed in a long long time. <clears throat> but the but the issue is is that a lot of times the devil will come in and he'll he'll instill doubt into what we're and what we're praying for and what we're praying about. Even after I left the altar that day, something would pop into my mind and say, that ain't real. That's, you just had emotions that you couldn't contain, so you had to get up and do with it. But it so that wasn't real. <clears throat> so in my prayers, I've tried to focus on this right here, and it, it's starting at verse 23. For verily I say, and it's in red, so I'm pretty sure it's important. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt it in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith <clears throat> shall come to pass, <clears throat> he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. I pray that this is real. I pray that I know that I know that I know that I'm saved and that God is the king of all of my life and that in him I put my trust. And so that's what we just need to push forward to and understand. Don't let doubt come into your life and let you miss out on what God's got planned for you. church. There's one thing about it, brother. God's got a plan for all of us. If we'll just follow his plan. <laughs> Anybody have a prayer request tonight? You... Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege that we have to be back in our church tonight with our church family. We thank you, Lord, for your presence that we can feel here already tonight. Thank you, Lord, for each one that's here. And for those, Lord, that couldn't be here for some reason, we pray that you'd be with them. Be with those, Lord, that are going through some difficult times, their sickness, all kinds of problems, Lord, that we endure here in this life. Be with those, Lord, that are having some problems now. Lord, we ask that you go with us through the service tonight. Be with Brother Justice as he brings the message tonight. Give us receptive hearts, Lord, that we listen to him. Go with us now, Lord, through the service. And may everything, Lord, that we say and do here tonight bring honor and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God for another chance to be here. Amen. Won't keep you too long. I reckon there is supposed to be a, a chance of some storms coming through. But, you know, God runs it. God will watch over us. We put our trust in Him. I do want to say that despite what my hair looks like, I have not joined a Beatles tribute band. I just ain't got it cut in a while. I'm kind of like somebody with a new baby. You know, you've got the baby, and you know you have to do stuff, but you don't know how to do it. That's how I am with a lot of hair. I don't know how to do anything with it. But I uh, want to talk tonight about something that affects us all. I kind of hit on it a couple of months ago, something similar. And then uh, the last night, I believe that Travis spoke, he uh, kind of walked all over it. I looked at Willie, and I said, man, he, he treading on it there. And it's going to have some shared scripture within, but... Uh, First, let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Father, we thank you for another chance being here, Lord. We just ask that you get us out of the way, Father, and use us to spread your word and give the message, Father, that we will all absorb what you have for us to say and keep it in our hearts as we go throughout each day. And we thank you in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Short one-verse scripture. You don't have to turn to it. Everybody knows it, I'm sure. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. That is my, everybody has their favorite verse. That's mine. Um, and it fits well with this. Kind of a little title for tonight is Caution, Detour Ahead. Uh, my favorite so-called, I guess, famous preacher, TV preacher, whatever, is Dr. Tony Evans. And about two days after God started kind of filtering this idea to me, Tony Evans come out and was preaching, had a series on detours. So I've tried to stay away from that, and I'm looking forward tomorrow to a binge watching all his broadcast on detours. I didn't want to steal from him or whatever, but uh, it's all God's word. There ain't no stealing. We're all, uh, people say we're on a journey of life. You know, they like to make these big things. I'm going to call it a road trip for tonight instead of a journey. And we all started out at the same place. We were born. So we all had the same uh, starting point. And we all have the option of two destinations, heaven or hell. That's the only two there is. Uh, if we've accepted Christ, then at some point in our life, the destination has changed from hell to heaven. Because we were all born into a world of sin. So as long as we lived a long life, past the age of accountability or whatever, our original destination was hell. But Christ comes in and we choose that. We're going to heaven. That is our destination. Now, picture this as a road trip again. Once we choose heaven as our destination, we give up the right to be navigator of our road trip. We're no longer the navigator. We're still the driver. We still direct where we go and decide where to go. But as far as the making the plans and leading and all that, that's off of us. That's God. Now, even though we all know that and there's a bunch of amens, somewhere in our little brain, there's this part of us that still says, we in control. And there's a big part of God that giggles real big when we think that and we act upon it. We think that we set the course, we design the trip, we have our itinerary, what we're going to do each day, we plan the sightseeing tours. You know, we plan where we're going to eat, where we're going to get the fuel to keep going, how many miles we're going to travel this day. And that kind of reminds me of the main character in my favorite movie, Vacation, Clark W. Griswold, <clears throat> who had this whole trip planned out on his little Pac-Man looking computer. And if you remember, nothing worked out good. He ended up with a dead grandmother-in-law in a rocking chair on top of his car. Dragging a dog behind him, eating sandwiches beside the road, soaked with dog pee. And I'm guessing that wasn't in the plan. But that's how we look, I would imagine, to God. I watch that movie, especially with Dad, and laugh and laugh and laugh. But he had it all worked out and nothing went the way he thought. And God's probably looking down, going, Lord. I doubt he said, Lord. He don't talk to himself a lot. But uh, I'd say he shakes his head at us a lot because we think that we've got it. And just when we think we've got it, that's when he will put a detour in our life and reveal that he is the sovereign one. He is the one in control. <clears throat> we all know what a detour is, but just for the sake of it, I looked up a definition and it said a long or roundabout route taken to avoid something or to visit somewhere along the way. Now, most detours we know here on earth in the natural realm have to do with construction or something like that. So why do we have detours, either in the natural or the spiritual? One reason, they divert us from danger. If there's a rock slide that you could come around a curve and hit with your car, they'll put up a detour sign. Or a road is washed out. Or there's construction with some big heavy equipment and stuff you could come around. They'll send you on another route. <clears throat> God also puts detours in our lives. 
to direct us from danger. The scripture that Travis was uh, speaking of out, of out of the other night, Exodus 13, 17 and 18, when the Israelites first left Egypt, says, And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. He knew that they were in a weakened state. We're talking about a people that were under slavery for years. They didn't get to work out and go through military drills every day and practice weapons training. They weren't made for war. So God took them a different route. To not only keep them out of the danger of facing the army, but the fact that they would run away and just say, I'm going back to Egypt, and they wouldn't be free anymore. So danger is one way that God will use a detour in our life. And a lot of times we're innocent in it. He'll see that someone else is being a stumbling block or leading us in the wrong direction, and he'll put a detour that removes that from us. When I talked about the mater plants a little while, a few weeks ago, talking about how you, he prunes and he gets things out of the way that's absorbing our nutrients and food from him. He will do that with people, with jobs, with situations. A lot of times we'll bring detours on ourselves in the spiritual. And another purpose that he'll put a detour in our life is to put us back on the right path. Uh, Sin, Israelites later were put on a detour. One that uh, went from 11 days worth of walking, is what some historians say, to 40 years because of disobedience and sin. Jonah was put on a detour. Jonah ran from what God told him and disobeyed him and ended up in the belly of a giant fish. Guessing that probably wasn't on his plan. It was a little bit of a detour for him. So God will take things and put in our life that we see as bad or awful we see as things that are harming us at the time it happens but he'll put them there to bring us back to him I was talking to someone last night and we've discussed it many times too many times we have to hit rock bottom before we look to God if we would not do that a lot of times we wouldn't have to hit rock bottom but we have that little piece in there that says we're the navigator this is the way to do it this is the best way, going to do it this way, and you do that 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times before you realize, wrong. I need to turn it over to God. Some of the effects of these detours, just like in the natural, they're not always convenient. They mess us up. If you're heading to work in the morning and you run across a detour, that's going to take your schedule out. It's going to mess up your routine. You may not get to go by your favorite drive through and get a biscuit. It's going to make you miss, mess you up and maybe even get you rattled so much that it affects your whole day. That's, a, that's depending on how you react to it. But if we don't look at it that way and we're having to take this alternate route on the road, we may see things that we never would have before, that we didn't notice before. God may take you on a physical detour on a road at the perfect exact time to cross over a hill and see the most beautiful sunset you've ever seen. A road that you may have traveled every day, but you never got to see that because of the time you came through. You will get to meet people through these detours. You may be on a side road, alternate route on a little back road, and go stop for gas or something to drink and meet someone there and have an opportunity to witness. And that may be the whole purpose of the detour sign that VDOT has put out there which if they were inspected ahead of time by some of their <laughs> inspectors, things like that wouldn't happen. I'm not saying any names, but he has a beard. <laughs> you may be put in a situation to help someone through this physical detour that you never would have known about. You may go around while you're in that gas station that you never would have been at. There may be someone standing there Starving to death, freezing to death, either have no money or forgot their wallet and you have opportunity to bless them. And that's just on our natural side. On these spiritual detours. 
when God changes our life so much. It all happens the same way too. You may see things and have opportunities in your spiritual walk that you never got to. Joseph ended up in a hole and sold and was almost killed. And before you know it, he was influencing rulers. He was making decisions for a whole nation. Now that's something that if they would have just raised him like a good little brother and been nice to him, none of that would have ever happened. That was opportunity that he had. Daniel didn't really want his whole nation to be captive by the Babylonians. But once he was there, he was the main one that influenced decision with kings. If they would have been left alone in their homeland, something that they all, I'm sure, wanted, that opportunity never would have happened and all these other people wouldn't have been reached through Daniel's influence. Something that you may have opportunity to do things that completely differ from what you thought. There were a few guys back in Bible times that were getting ready to go fishing. And this long-haired dude come by and he's like, hey, follow me. The names you hear in the New Testament, the disciples, if it wasn't for a detour in their life, they would have caught fish till they died. That's it. But Christ came in and put a detour there. So everything that comes against us as a change or a detour, though sometimes with our physical eyes we see it as a detriment or a hardship, it's not always that way. If you think of a just a simple drawing of a detour, you got your road going here, and then you got a side road going around like that and joining back. All that stuff in the middle in that blank spot, that's things you missed. Some of it might have been good things for you. But you can bet that the things on that side road, if it's a detour that God puts you on, the things in the middle that you miss are going to be way less than the things you, you get. Going to be way less than the things that you get to do. God puts detours in our life for several reasons, but that is one of the biggest points. That we get opportunities to do things that we wouldn't have been able to to begin with. The end result of these detours. If you're going from here to St. Paul and there's a detour right up here that sends you by the school instead of straight down the four lane, eventually after you go down the river road or booty or whatever, your destination is going to be St. Paul. There's going to be guidelines to direct you back to your original destination. Spiritual detours, if we stay on the course, that the guideposts show us to, in other words, the words show us to, our destination is still the same. Our destination will still one day be heaven. It's what happens between then and there that makes the difference here in this life. Your destination won't change. The Israelites, they were on a 40-year detour because of sin and disobedience. But their destination was still the promised land. That's where they ended up. Jonah ran from God, disobeyed, ended up in the belly of a well. But if he just listened, he ended up in the same place God wanted him to go anyway. He went to Nineveh regardless. Joseph, his destination, though unknown to him, was to be high up in a government, to be a ruler. That's where he ended up anyway. We stay that course. We stay and follow those signs. Those signs in the natural are orange, with a big old black arrow pointing this way and that, and they stick out to it. In the spiritual, it's not always that way. We gotta search for them. We gotta search for them through prayer. We gotta search for them through the word. And there is no question you can ask that you won't find that answer in that sign pointing you in the right direction right there. It don't matter what it is, Bert. Should I take this job? All right. It's not going to tell you, yeah, you should probably work with Bristol Compression. But there's going to be telling you to pray for wisdom and direction. Telling you how to hear God's voice. Should I do this or that to benefit my family? Well, it's not going to tell you that, yeah, you should probably save this percentage a month in the bank to benefit your family. But it will give you financial guidelines from God and how to do that. Should I eat this or that? It's not going to tell you to only eat 
one Big Mac combo instead of three, but it will tell you not to overindulge. That gluttony is a sin. Every answer, in the, but we have to look for it. It's not like Danny's shirt with the high visibility stripes. We have to dig and look for it. VDOT, y'all do have the things that let you know you have flashing signs. And I was thinking when I was going to do this, see if you'd get me one of them to plug up. But I know they have pretty loud generators, so it wouldn't work. But they have flashing signs with arrows. They have cones set up to where you're not even allowed to go in the wrong direction. It's not like that spiritually. Like I said, God's a navigator. We're the driver. We can choose to go that wrong way and stay on the alternate course. We can choose to never get back to that final destination that God has set for us. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Read it real quick. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are than your thoughts. When you have that plan laid out for your life, and God intervenes with a detour. A lot of times we'll get mad. God, why'd you do this? Why'd you take this away? Or why'd you make me do this? We'd remember that verse right there. We'd never have that question. No matter how we fail, we'd never have that question. Because we know that his ways and his thoughts are so much more than ours. We go through a lot. I look through some of the things in my life. I had a situation come up that caused me to lose my ability to go to work at my job with Norfolk Southern. I didn't like it. It wasn't fun. caused a lot of struggle and hardship. If it wasn't for that, I'd never been able to be there on Fridays at FCA with the kids. If it wasn't for that, and an eight-year-old brought this to my attention. After everything that happened, and it was just me there at the house, Shay said, you know, if you were still working on the weekends like you used to, I wouldn't be able to come over here no more. That's true. She said that on her own. So I get to work and ministry with kids. I get to be a part of that young girl's life as a uncle figure, father figure, whatever you want to call it. I get to do my duties here at the church now because of things that I didn't like to begin with. Other things that have happened in my life, things that will happen that God will take away are things you never, ever thought you would lose. You never, ever thought you would go with that. But God will move them for your benefit. We don't always see it that way. But we don't see that it's dragging us down. We don't see that it's holding us back or hindering us from doing the work for him that he has laid out. And I can tell you, like what he said the other day, when you do something for him, it's going to be hard. But the blessing far outweighs it. And it's not going to come the first day you do it always. You're not going to always say, well, automatically I know why this happened so God can give me this. You're not going to always know that. There will be people, like I said, you'll lose things. I've lost something that I never, ever thought I'd lose. But you know what I've gained in the last two years? A closeness with God that I never, ever would have had. I gained, if nothing else, but time. Time to spend in his word. Time to spend on my knees in prayer talking to him. And it took a sign that wasn't obvious from Bob Justice. He said, I know that you don't like this. I know that you didn't see this. But now is an opportunity if you look at it that way. That was a sign that was hidden in the weeds. And all of a sudden somebody cut them limbs and painted it bright orange. Where it bam right in my face. God takes these things that we feel are against us. <clears throat> that may in a natural physical way be against us. But he don't work that way. He don't work in a natural, physical way. He didn't just sit back when Paul's boat hit that shore and busted all to pieces. And then sit back and say, all right, that was useless. Let's not do anything with that. He healed him in front of native people that had probably never heard of him. Healed Paul of a snake bite. And everyone there on the island was in awe. You should be dead. And he was still standing there talking and just building a fire. No big deal. 
He takes everything. He took what we look at as the worst pain, the worst punishment that any man on the face of this earth has ever faced when Christ was beaten and forced up that hill and put on that cross and killed. He took that that we would probably never do for anyone. He took that awful thing and made it to where I can go step aside of him one day for eternity. He did that so I could go right here, even on this earth, and have these signs to follow through these detours in my life. God takes things that come against us. God takes things that we bring on ourselves. And Jonah keeps coming back into my mind. A lot of things happen to us because we're innocent. And God sees ahead. We're not... We can't see the way he does about how things are affecting us. But a lot of times, we bring it on ourselves. Jonah said, I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm going to run. You can't outrun God. He tried. He ended up in the belly of a whale. He disobeyed God. Didn't do the things that he wanted him to. And God still brought him out of it. That's what sticks out to me. Jason, brother, you stick right there where you're at. I've been there. I've been with God. I've went away. And you know what he did? He stayed right there like this. Just wait for me to turn around. I saw a thing online and it was a little cartoon guy walking with Jesus. And they were on this straight path. And there was a side and it said fun on that side road. And that guy said, hang on, Jesus. I'll be right back. Well, he took off walking and it showed a great distance between him and Christ. And kind of like the prodigal son, everything fell apart. And he turned around and come back. And Jesus was standing there and said, well, that took longer than it should have. Which is a good point. But the thing is that I disagreed with. It showed that great distance between him and Jesus that he had to walk back to. That's not the way it is. I don't care how far away you got to walk to, you walk to get away. All you got to do to get back is turn yourself around. He's right there behind him. It don't matter what, how you reacted to the detour that happened in your life. How you got mad and said, God, you shouldn't have done this. How you said, I'm going to go back to my old ways because you let me down. Once you finally are ready to come back and get back on that course and stay on that detour and get to that final destination with him, he's standing right there. He's not a long way off. There's nothing else you have to do except say, here, Lord, take me. Here I am. I want to get back on with you. <clears throat> in my mind what I'm getting ready to say next is pointless because one thing I love about this church is it always is but the altar's open some places you know don't you get out of that seat while I'm preaching or I'll cast you out you know this altar is open now you may be going through a detour of your own right now that you didn't expect you may realize it's a detour or you may not. But either way, even when we do see it, we need strength. Amen. We need encouragement. Amen. We need guidance and those signs pointing towards us. And knowing the signs are there, we still need the vision to see them. Yes, I can see a lot sometimes and just pass by, glance at and not pick up on it. You may not be in a detour. Everything may be on a perfect path. There will be a detour. Or... You're going to have to have strength to stay on that path. It don't just take strength to go through things. It takes strength to stay when everything's going right. Because when everything's going right, that's when it's easy to forget God. When you need God, you don't forget God. Think of it when you was growing up, when you was outside playing. You get hurt, you call, you holler at mommy and daddy. If you ain't hurt, they never cross your mind. While you're out having fun and everything with your friends, you don't think about mommy and daddy. That's how we do Jesus. It's easy to remember him when we need him. When we're hurt. When we're going through things. When things are perfect, we need him just as much. Because once we've fallen or going through something, we're there. We're already there. But when you're, everything's going perfect, the fall is upcoming. And the, it'll hurt more once it comes later than if you're already there. If I'm laying here on the ground after jumping off this pulpit like an idiot and laying there spraining my ankle, I'm in pain. But Woody decides to do it after me for whatever reason. He's going to be in more pain when he hits because I've been laying there suffering for a little while. His is going to be fresh and new. So even if things are going right, we need that strength. 
So if anyone wants to come that's going through a detour, that maybe things aren't exactly the way you want it, that need to be shown God is still there, God is still directing, or if anyone's there and they're afraid a detour may be coming up, they're afraid that maybe they may be slipping. Well, maybe everything's perfect. And you'd like for it to stay that way. You need direction. You need strength to continue straight. Don't be Clark Griswold. Remember at the end, he finally did make it to Wally World with Marty Moose. But he wasn't happy there either. When we get through our detours and make it to our destination, everything is going to be perfect. There, there'll be no door saying heaven closed like it was at Wally World. Just a gate swung open wide for it. If anyone wants to, come on. Pray for anything. I did not pray ahead of time for God to send that lightning bolt and thunder right when I said come on. Touch those that we may not have been in contact with if it wasn't for our own experience. Lord, we just pray for an outpouring of your spirit for each and every one of us, Lord, to continue doing the will that you have for us as individuals, as a church, Lord, and that we continue thanking you for each and every blessing and opportunity that we give. Thank you, Lord, for all these things. Thank <laughs> you. 